your Fox Open Theater for the graduating class, Oakland School for the Arts, 2015. Round of applause. Standing or stand up, please. If you're going to do the national anthem, will the vocal music students please come forward? Theater. OSA has changed us all. 
This school has shaped us to be the most creative, passionate artists we are today. We all can remember what it was like when we had that solo in the annual vocal spring show in the Fox. Said that poem which led to winning the slam contest. Or build that stage for the annual musical in the Fox Theater, Scotty Shrine, and the Black Box. Everyone on this stage has shared a moment with our teachers and administration. If it was to talk about college choices with Ms. Kestenbaum or Ms. Hendry, going to Rosenberg's office hours to work on that essay, even talking to Ms. T or Ms. Jones about how stressful senior year can be. I know we've all experienced these type of moments. So with that being said, we would like to thank all of our teachers and administration for standing by our sides, passing us tissues so we can wipe our tears, but most importantly, never giving up on us. We also would like to say thank you to all of our family and close friends who yelled at us, bugged us to get that A plus in econ, Mr. Taylor. Never let us forget about scholarships, but most of all, loved us through it all. We can both say that OSA will always be in our hearts wherever we go, and we will never forget the moments we shared on the second and third floor. Because, like the great Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellent is then, not an act, but a habit. Have a great graduation day, OSA! And at this time, it is my honor and privilege to invite to the podium the governor of the state of California and the founder of our school, the Honorable Jerry Brown. It's really exciting to see all these graduates and to see them here in the Fox Theater. It wasn't very long ago that this Fox Theater was dark, empty, and almost abandoned. And the Oakland School for the Arts was in a basement a few blocks away, and many of the skeptics said, it'll never make it. Those were some of the same skeptics that said, Oakland won't make it. But Oakland is now the center of creative activity in the whole San Francisco Bay Area. And this is the Oakland School for the Arts. Not the San Francisco School for the Arts, and not the New York School for the Arts, but the Oakland School for the Arts, and that's why it's so great. So, Oakland is a gritty city that some people gave up on, but I was privileged to come here in 1994, and somehow I got myself elected mayor, and from mayor I got myself elected governor, and, uh, you know, that's what happens when you live in Oakland and you get involved with the Oakland School for the Arts. Nothing is impossible. And the revitalization in downtown Oakland started with the Fox Theater, and the Fox Theater started with the Oakland School for the Arts. So it's creative, but it's also constructive, and building, and civic engagement, it's all that rolled into one. And my only parting thoughts, it's a school of art, and you can plan and you can manage, but when you invent and you create, you're never quite sure where it'll go. Robert Frost, in the introduction to his poems, described the way a poem is made. He said it begins, uh, begins with a question and ends in surprise. Like a piece of ice on a hot stove, it rides on its own melting. So, I tell you, it's both rigor and imagination. If all you have is imagination, you have insanity. If all you have is rigor, you have paralytic death. But if you put rigor and imagination together, you get the Oakland School for the Arts, you get greatness. Good luck, class of 2015. Good afternoon again, everybody. My name is Don Harris, and I am the lucky man who gets to be the executive director of this school. I'm going on my eighth year now, and it's been a wonderful ride for eight years. I'm so proud to see you all here today and to celebrate the class of 2015. I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with these very unique and talented students and seeing them achieve at levels we could only dream about, and then they went out and did it. 
Please join me one more time in a rousing applause for this class. I've been told not to clap with the microphone, so forgive me if I get so excited by clapping the mic. I'll try not to bust your ears. Um, this class has so many memorable, memorable accomplishments that if I started listing them, we would surely leave some out. So I will say only this. When you look at the graduates on this stage, you see designers, dancers, actors, effective communicators, filmmakers, visual and digital artists, musicians, composers, vocalists, social activists, music production technicians, builders, fashion designers, leaders, critical thinkers, writers, and of course, global citizens of the world. I checked and except for Antarctica, every continent on the planet is represented up here today, and we are very proud of that. If OSA is a microcosm of the world, we have a lot to feel good about. I attend many graduations each year, and in them I hear advice, pronouncements, little cautionary tales, the kind of thing I didn't listen to at all when I was ready to leap out into the world and take it full by force. One thing I have noticed though, you guys, you listen a lot better than we do. You look for us, you seek us out, you really respond to our guidance. So here's one last shot while I have you up here as a captive audience. I want to tell you a few things I've come to believe. Send good messages to yourself. Finish what you start, admit your mistakes, and think of yourself and act accordingly as someone who gives value added to the world. The world is a magical and breathtaking place and you guys make it better. Wake up each day, look in the mirror and say, this could be a challenging day. I may have to make decisions that affect other people, but I can do that. Do not doubt that you are qualified to do so. If you always ask this question, what is the right thing to do? This question, if answered truthfully, will solve almost anything. And again, if things are headed in a bad direction, and you can do something about it, but if you feel uncertain about taking a leadership role, you should ask, why not me? Who better than me can stand up and make things better? And if other people stand up as well, there is room for all of you. Share the stage, and the stage grows bigger. I have a line from a poem that I personally love. It's If by Rudyard Kipling. And it tells us something that I wish I would have learned a lot more quickly. And I'm still trying to carve away this message today, but I hope you guys learn it more quickly. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think but not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of that last brutal mile, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be all grown up, my child. You'll be all grown up, my child. Those two imposters, triumph and disaster, the unforgiving minute filled with your last ounce of energy and will, are you ready? I think you are. Congratulations, class of 2015. And now I'd like to invite to the podium the high school principal, Ms. Brianna Shavar. Before I announce the Leadership Award, I want to recognize a few students who went above and beyond expectations. This year, for the first time, we implemented a senior project that involved teaching students grant writing skills and thinking about community building. And all of the students did a fantastic job writing letters of intent and giving presentations. I had the privilege of watching all of them, and they were fantastic. But a few students did the complete project writing nine to 10 page um, grant proposals that, and did, giving pretty long presentations that were really wonderful. I want to invite them to stand when I call their names and please hold your applause till the end. Taylor Smith, um, Lucas Ferreira, Zoe Godfrey Granat, Julia Martinez Franks, Alana Freeman Lebovitz, Priyana Turner, and Jordan Collins. privilege to give the leadership award. At OSA, a typical leadership style involves loud voices and big personalities. This year's recipient is different. With a quiet but strong demeanor, she leads by example and with consistency in all that she does. Her teachers have the following to say about her. 
More impressive than her focus, hard work, and scholarly approach is the fact that she, does, that she displays this on a consistent basis. She leads by example, showing daily what it means to be fully present in everything she does. She balances the seriousness of approach with a lighthearted personality and is liked and respected by both peers and adults. Another teacher added, I honestly can't give her a higher recommendation for the Leadership Award. She stands out to me as the most consistent leader I've seen in my years at OSA. She has been assistant music director for Vocal Rush this year and completely taken the role to a new level. She leads with confidence, grace, poise, and above all, establishes an environment of mutual respect that is far beyond her years. She is the one student who is consistently modeling what it means to be an OSA student. Um, representing us next year at UCLA, please join me in congratulating this year's winner, Jada Bates. <laughs> Excellence Award, um, our Dean of Students, Mike Hoff. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to kind of face this way, and I, I want to start by saying this. Uh, this award that I've given a lot of awards over the years, and this award that I'm going to be giving now is I'm, I'm very honored, if not the most honored I've ever been in giving an award. And the reason is because it's been so many years in the making. I've got to go back to the quote that Zoe said a minute ago, uh, Aristotle, almost 2,400 years ago. Uh, said excellence is not an act but a habit. So by that definition, you know, you, you can't necessarily be excellent. I mean, you, you look at someone over a period of time and you can conclude, yeah, you know, they've done a lot of amazing things and I would say that's an excellent person. And then it begs the question, how long does it take to really recognize and see somebody and know that they are what you would consider to be truly excellent? Well, this person that I'm about to bring up, I've known for seven years, and in these seven years, I can think of so many Difficult situations, so many ups and downs, uh, personal struggles, struggles at school, academic struggles, and I truly, straight from the bottom of my heart, have not seen this person be anything less than excellent, both artistically and academically. Ms. Brandasia Gwen, please come up. We have a student performance ready to set up, so we're going to let them bring out the uh, materials we need. So from our instrumental music department on the guitar, we're going to hear Libra Tango by Hector Villalobos. Performed by Liam Harson and Jasmine Stade. Instrumental music.
set up. I would like to acknowledge that we have opened up the balcony for the first time in the history of OSA and the Fox Theater. Welcome balcony members, families and community members. We're getting bigger. 98 graduates on this stage. I thought there were only 90. Did we pick up eight on the way in? 98 graduates. So um, as we wait, we're going to bring out right now. The next performance is going to be, let me get it here. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're going to the class of the speakers. And why don't we first hear from Taylor Smith from the class of 2015. off by acknowledging a few special people here today who have took a long road with me. If you are one of the originals at OSA and I've been here since sixth grade, can I ask you to please stand? Wow. It has been a real long road for us. We were the last class in the portables, like I said before. We are the originals. We have gone through tons of transitions together. And it has not been easy. We have been through a lot together, and we created memories together. I want to thank each and every one of you for being on this journey with me. And you guys all have a special place in my heart. Nobody on this stage today is perfect. For all of us have taken, for, for all of us life has taken a detour. Things might have happened that we never would have wished would happen. Tears have been shed and we all had our ups and our downs. We might not have gotten the grades we wanted, might have not, might have not gotten into our number one college. We might have had disagreement with our loved ones and we might not be who we wish we would be. But we're all on the stage and we're getting ready to walk across it. So that means we have accomplished something. We worked very hard to be here and we prepared for this day. We all had that dream of holding that diploma in our hand. So don't let those misfortunes stop you from where you want to go. Don't let the detour of life stop you from being proud. Walk across this stage with your head, with your head held high, your pride and your dignity. Education is the first step to where you want to be and where you need to be. You are in charge of where you go next. The road will not be easy. We are going to face challenges. But you have not gotten this far for nothing. A wise man with a bad past and a bright future once said, education is the passport for the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. Malcolm X. This is 
the first step on your passport, and you have many more stops, spots to fill. Don't think of your past as a hindrance, but see it as an experience that has helped provide you with the wisdom, strength, and skills that you have today. Don't, do not let this or your past determine your future, but learn from it. Prepare for where you need to go, and don't let anything stop you. You may not see yourself going to lecture hall, but see yourself coming home with that degree. You may not see yourself writing a 20-page essay, but see yourself publishing your first novel. You may not see yourself remembering all those lines in one night, but see yourself receiving that first Oscar. See that dream, see that book, see that award, and see that degree. See yourself being a singer, a dancer, an actor, a writer, an artist, a lawyer, a doctor, a photographer, an engineer, a musician. <coughs> Congratulations, class 2015. <laughs> Now our second class selected speaker, Mr. Liam Hardison. Hello. I'd like to share with you all my perspective on art. Art has the power to manipulate emotions vicariously teach and change the future, past, and present. In our ninth grade year at Oakland School for the Arts, the class of 2015 took art history with Ms. Weiss. Early on in the course, she asked us a fundamental question, does art imitate life or does life imitate art? The answer is not as clear as you think. Art depicts documents and represents everything that is both in and out of sight. Most of what we have to infer from about the past is manifested in different forms of art, from cave paintings to novels, from sonatas to sonnets, from documentaries to documents. All of these are tools we use to collectively paint a picture of our past and of our close as well as distant relatives. We take these manifestations for fact building our perception of past life on the art we see produced in that time. Our future is molded by our expectations, a self-fulfilling prophecy that is created by our experience of hypothetical futures we observe in cinema as well as other mediums. Popular movies and shows have paved the way for what we expect from the technology of tomorrow and what we want our future world to be. Art creates the dreams we pursue. 100% of our perceived reality, be it past, present, or future, is subjective and filtered by our previous experiences. Art we observe and experience is adopted into our consciousness, and thus every experience thereafter is seen through the art that was meaningful to us. I felt the power of anger, comedy, depression, and euphoria at the hand of a single performance. Art is the ultimate teacher, and artists, like the one seated before you, are the ultimate creators of our perceived and thus total reality. There is not one person on the stage who is incapable of creating addition to our society, the world, or a universe. Everyone on this stage has trained tirelessly to gain the power and privilege to change people's minds. Oakland School for the Arts has given us the time and space necessary to become the creators of life well lived. These artists are ready to show you things that you see every day in a way you couldn't have imagined before. The, uh, these artists are ready to introduce you to the world using their thoughts and ideas to make you ponder about who you really are. They are here to question you, astound you, anger you, befriend you, and guide you on your incredibly unique and individual path. 
In this way, the individuals on this stage today, the future artists of whatever field they may choose, are the people that you can thank for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you. We know very well how articulate our students are and how they're going to take the message of art and creativity and innovation out into the world. So thank you guys for that. And this time I'm going to invite to the stage Mr. Giselle Hendry, who's going to give the Academic Honors Awards. Good afternoon, OSA. <laughs> I've trained them well. Today I have the distinct pleasure of honoring two groups of students. The first group of students are seniors who have sort of epitomized for us what leadership means on our campus. This group of students attended a four-day workshop last summer at UC Berkeley where they learned about the college application process. They learned how to fill out an application, how to write a personal statement, and how to dig deep into themselves to see what, what works and what doesn't work, and how to not become stopped by their, their obstacles. They then came back to the campus and spent an entire year bringing that knowledge and that leadership to our high school. They uh, designed workshops led by Ms. Kastenbaum. Uh, they designed workshops for students in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, designed and delivered these workshops, and supported the senior class in achieving over 85% acceptance to four-year universities. And 10% will be attending two-year schools. And 5% of the senior class will be moving on to other things such as gap years, uh, travel abroad, and the military. So, I would like to ask the class of 2015 peer leaders to please stand so we can acknowledge all of the students in the class of 2015 who will be graduating with honors. These students have achieved a cumulative GPA of 3.5 and above. I, as I say your name, students, please stand. I will ask that you hold your applause until they're all standing and we can acknowledge them as a group. From the School of Dance, Ale Andres, Brandeja Gwynn, Colin Johnson, Naja Miller, from the School of Digital Media, Ingemar Anderson, Eli DeVries, and yes, Eli, this is my school. <laughs> to Sheila Garrett, from the School of Instrumental Music, Cole Berliner, Sivan Bordoabo, uh, Liam Hardison, Vinkia Hunter, Julian Pallier, all, mm, Oliver will come soon, Maureen Sides, uh, Jasmine Stade, Brianna Washington, from the School of Literary Arts, Chloe Charlton, Mina Jameson, Emily Kim, Ariel King, Cameron McDowell, Marian Selassie, Zach Zimmerly. From the School of Production Design, AJ Desleris Hill, <laughs> Sophia Navarrete Zur, Mikhail Finnessy, <laughs> From the School of Theatre, Lucas Alves Fer Ferrier. Ferreira, sorry. Uh, Elena, Elana, Freeman Lobovitz, Zoe Gafrikinich, Olivia Lowe, Mia Lundquist, Elena Maples, Julia Martinez Franks. From the School of Visual Art, uh, Taylor Jean, Emily Johnson Cow, Lucien Scanlon, and from the School of Vocal Music, we have Jada Banks Mace, McKenna Lindell Wright, and Marlon Veltman. Veltman. Our graduates with honors. These students have worked hard and maintained a very high GPA throughout their tenure with us, and we honor and appreciate them today. Salute to 
historian. So we have two young men who achieved uh, the second highest GPA in the class. These two young men are Oliver Palmer and Nathan De Silva. This year's valedictorian is a very special young woman in her own right. Uh, aside from achieving a near-perfect GPA, she has also brought a very special honor to our community this year. This year, she has been named a National Merit Scholar. This year's competition for National Merit Scholarships began in October 2013 when over 1.4 million juniors in some 22,000 high schools took the preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship qualifying test, which served as an initial screen of program entrance. Last fall, the highest scoring participants in each state, representing less than 1% of the nation's high school seniors, were named semi-finalists on a state representational, representational basis. Only these 16,000 semi-finalists had an opportunity to continue in the competition. From the semi-finalist group, 15,000 students met the very high academic standards and other requirements to advance to the finalist level of the competition. By the conclusion of the 2015 program, about 7,600 finalists will have earned the Merit Scholar title and received a total of about three, $34 million in college scholarships. I am very pleased to present to you today Oakland School for the Arts' first National Merit Scholar and the valedictorian of the class of 2015, Miss Zoe Turner. Resume for senior in high school. Congratulations, Zoe. We're going to set up for a performance now at this time. I think we're bringing out our performer. And with the keyboard in front of him, doing the opus number 10, number 4 in C sharp minor, OSA senior Julian Palieri.
for our next performance, doing the Great Train Race by Ian Clark. This will be performed by Maureen Sides from the School of Instrumental Music, class of 2015. dramatic pieces of dance you saw. Those students will be acknowledged in a minute. But just to make sure that they get acknowledged as well, we had on the stage at the beginning, in order, Colin Johnson, Naja Miller, and Brent Naja Thank you guys. At this time, I'd like to invite to the stage Ms. Brianna Shavar to give a very special honorary diploma. Graduations are joyous occasions. They are time to celebrate with community. They are also opportunities for reflection and a time for us to remember all of the people who are part of our journey. As I look on the class of 2015, I want to take a moment to remember one of the students who would have been here with us today. Last year around this time, we suffered the loss of Alexandra Ferranda. Those of us who knew her remember her as a bright student a talented and creative visual artist, and a caring friend. All of us in the OSA community who had a chance to get to know her carry a piece of her memory with us. As a community, we wish to honor her memory by granting her the first diploma of the class of 2015.
father, Dante Peranda, who's here today to accept the diploma on her behalf. brought to the tribute and thank you to the Fronda family for having Alice with us in the time she was here. At this time we're going to, be, to begin the awarding of the diplomas of the class of 2015. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> to represent the School of Dance my great and good friend is the Reginald Ray Savage. I guess you stand up things. The first one for the dancer. To paraphrase the great Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, rumble young people, rumble. And for all my fellow teachers and fellow OSA students, three things. One, create like a god. Rule like a king or queen. And three, always work like a slave. Get ready, school day. Here we go, 2015. group of seniors who are on their way to the top schools for film, design, engineering, and business. Keep an eye out for their names in the credits very soon. Please come forward, Ingemar Anderson. Elliot Carroll. Elijah the Breeze. <laughs> Paloma Front. <laughs> to Shayla Garrett.
now present our music chair, Kava Menzies. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kava Menzies, and it is my honor today, this is my first time getting the privilege to announce our instrumental music department graduates, and this is quite a department. I think I probably don't need to say much, um, but you've seen their incredible artistry showcased on this stage today. Can we please give a rousing round of applause for the incredible musicians? And also we had our incredible musicians playing pop and circumstance on the floor as the graduates came in. This particular class of students are all leaders. They are incredible young artists in their own right, incredible musicians, composers, do internships, SF Conservatory, Oakland East Bay Symphony Orchestra, um, you know, professional music tours. Please look out for their names in the future. We are so incredibly proud of them. First up, we have Mr. Cole Berliner. Next up we have David Campbell. Next up, Mr. Loris Dyke. writer Octavia Butler once wrote, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. I'd like to thank these following students for changing not only the literary arts department, but for changing me as well. They have transformed this department, they have brought breadth and depth, fire, tears, 
love, and so many words. So the first one is the utterly savvy Chloe Charlton. Righteous Imani Dilts. <laughs> the luminous Mina Jameson. <laughs> the sagacious Emily Kim. They're writers, they can look these big words up. <laughs> the indomitable Ariel King. <laughs> the lion-hearted Nicole Lovett. Selena Bachwan. The trenchant Cameron McDowell. The enigmatic Paige O'Farrell. Glorious Lena O'Neill. <laughs> the ethereal Miriam Selassie. <laughs> the otherworldly Winnie Smith. <laughs> the incomparable Taylor Smith. Incredibly giggly, Kaya Wade. I love these guys so much, and we are going to miss them tremendously. And up next is the chair of production design at the John Francois. Community, um, I would like to start by saying that today is for me a very, very important day as I have the pleasure to have my son on stage graduating today. Uh, so, like you, I'm a proud father, I'm a proud parent, I'm very excited. Uh, and I would like to call now to the stage the graduate of production design class of 2015. Amazing artists and such hard working students. So, the first to come and get his diploma for 2015 is Gabrielle Bennett.
Jessica Padilla. Michaela Finnessy. Last but not least, Chloe Marie Thomas! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure and honor that I give you the class of 2015 production design! Mr. Michael Berry, Chair of the Theatre Department. The senior class of 2015 School of Theatre has in mass collectively over 150 productions in their time at OSA. That equates to over 17,500 hours of rehearsal. All doing this with a cumulative collective 3.85 GPA. With the class of 2015, School of Theater, please rise to receive your diplomas. This first student came onto the scene seven years ago, the same year that I joined OSA, and it's taken me this long to get it right, but it is with great honor that I introduce Mr. Lucas Ferreira. <laughs> Mr. Noah Baldwin. Miss Tiara Lindbergh. <laughs> Miss Galana Freeman. Miss Zoe Godfrey Gibbons. <laughs> Miss Olivia Lowe. Miss Eleanor Maples. <laughs> Miss Julia Martinez Franks.
Mr. Cameron Thorpe. Miss Kriana Turner. Big round of applause for the class of 2015 School of Theater. It is now my pleasure to introduce the co-chairs of Visual Art, Mr. Pablo Christie and Mr. Andrew Gandhi. Thank you, Mr. Barry Berlinski. Uh, usually I win with some, uh, that doesn't always work out so well. Uh, so, I just, uh, I'm, I, if this only takes 15 minutes or so, it should be alright. Uh, I have had the privilege of watching most of these young people grow up uh, in front of my eyes, witnessing and in many cases participating in these young humans becoming who they are. I'm so proud of them and so excited to see what they do with the rest of their lives. We worked together for years on this big art project called OSA. Uh, they've helped create this department and this school, and uh, for that we owe them all a big debt of gratitude. This grand collaborative work in progress has taught them to be flexible, resourceful, forgiving, uh, and steadfastly stubborn in the pursuit of their educational and artistic goals. And it's taught them to laugh. You have to laugh a lot when you're an artist, for reasons too obvious and too numerous to mention now. We laugh a lot in this department. Yes, please stand. Uh, 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 they laugh uh, a lot in this department, uh, partly, partly because uh, if you know these folks, they're, they're hilarious in that wonderful, weird art school sort of way. And partly because uh, this thing that we do, making art, is so inherently ridiculous, audacious, joyful, indulgent, and damn hard to do, that it seems at times like the pursuit of a mad person. And yet, here we all are. That's pretty funny to me, and that makes me smile. And when I think of these students, now and forever, I will smile and laugh. These are beautiful, talented, funny souls, and I'll miss them greatly. anything about these guys because they know how much I love them and appreciate them and I appreciate all of your support I would just really like to introduce these guys and get them their diplomas uh, starting with Sinai Mr. Tanner Jean. <laughs> Emily Johnson Cow.
Katia Pontio. Maya Ramirez. Adrian Ravon. Giovanni Ruiz. Alyssa Stanton. And this is our graduating class, School of Visual Art 2015. And I'd like to uh, bring up here the chairs of vocal music. ourselves to be a family. Our home is not going to be the same without these incredible people walking the hallways and walking in room 302. We're so proud of our accomplishments in our department and these students have paved the way for those accomplishments. They have put in the work day after day and we could not be more grateful for them. Thank you guys so much. We love you. It's been an incredible journey watching you guys grow up. Um, when I started at OSA, you all were in 8th grade, and I know many of you have been here since 6th grade. You guys have had a long journey. You've helped shape our department. You've helped define our Fox shows. You guys are part of that first generation of Fox show performers, and uh, we just could not be more proud of you all. I love you each um, so much, and uh, here we go. Y'all ready? Give it up for Jada Banks May.
Sophia Del Favaro. McKenna Linda Wright. <laughs> Mr. Devon Thank you. 